everybody, and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by the Minecrafters. I'm Captain Jack, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about an Apply and Energistics add-on mod called Extra Cells. All right, so what this mod does is it basically um, increases the versatility of applied energistics and what you can do with it. It will add some uh, huge storage cells or segments or clusters as they're called, item storage clusters, and it will also give you the ability to store liquids and also format some of your storage devices. So let's take a look real quick at what we got here. These are the new storage um, cards that are added into um, added with a, a, the extra cells mod. Um, what we have is a kilo, mega, giga, and tera storage cluster. Um, and these things are basically the components to make these over here. And we'll go over those in just one second. Um, here we have fluid storage, cells, segment, uh, block, and cluster. And these are the default uh, applied energistics ones that you're probably used to. Same thing as the fluid, cell, segment, block, and cluster. Now over here we have uh, what these are actually used in. So I'm not going to show the recipes for all of these things because uh, they are pretty in-depth and it's going to take a lot of time to make something like the Terra storage cluster here. So let's just take a look at that real quick. I'm going to check the recipe. Um, it's 3 gigas and an advanced processor with a diamond. And to make the gigas, it's 3 megas and so on and so forth. And then we go down to cluster, storage block, segment, and finally cell. So they're very resource intensive to make. However, on the Terra cell, you can end up storing... Um, 16 million and that's on uh, this block right here okay so the maximum amount um, you could store in one card with applied energistics the default stuff is uh, 64k uh, the base model for this is 256k so this is going to increase your storage per cell by an absolutely massive amount at the cost of a lot more resources of course um, over here we have liquid storage which is something brand new added by the extra cells mod we have a liquid storage, we have uh, fluid storage, it's 1K, 4K, 16, and 64, basically the same thing as the applied energistics item storage, which has a 1K, 4K, 16, and also a 64K storage. In order to craft these ME fluid storage, you're going to need these, um, these over here, the fluid storage, and they're the cell segment block and cluster, and they basically work the exact same way as the um, regular item storage, they're just for liquids. Another neat thing this mod adds is the blast resistant ME drive and it only has three slots inside it for your different cards but it can basically survive almost any kind of explosion. I'm told it can even survive a nuclear explosion. So what this will do is just keep all of your different cells safe inside even if a creeper attacks you or if somebody nukes your base. So it's a pretty neat thing to have. Next we have the ME battery backup here and you can see inside here that it will store an enormous amount of energy and it will also be reflected up top here in your controller. If uh, if this is empty, it will show red, and if it's green, it will be full. And you do need a redstone signal to activate this thing here. So if I turn it on, it's gonna it's going to uh, drain out into your into your ME. There we go. Okay. And let me just show you if it's uh, empty. So we're gonna put one down here. Uh, we got one on our system. We're gonna flip it on, and what's gonna happen is it's going to slowly start to fill up. And as it fills up, the color is slowly going to change. It's going to go from red to yellow to uh, green. And uh, you're going to have a happy little battery backup. Again, again that's uh, activated by using a lever. Sometimes uh, this is a little bit buggy in that it doesn't show right away. There you go. It's green. Okay, so we're getting right up there. It skipped yellow. Um, anyways, next thing we got here is the ME item dropper. And this basically will just um, drop items that you have it configured to. So um, right now... This is configured to drop set to triple meat treat. And uh, I can also go ahead and uh, if you, whoop, if I right click, it will just change the item that, that it will drop and it will pull straight out of your system. So I have 120 triple meat treat. I'm going to right click on that and it's going to set it to that. And uh, if I hit the button, blop, it's going to pop a few out. Okay, so that's basically all the item dropper does. All right, next we have the soldering station and the adjustable ME storage. The adjustable ME storage is made by crafting three 1K storages alongside uh, two basic processors. And that's going to give you um, this right here. And it says adjustable. Right now it's uh, only got 4,096 bytes out of 27 types. Okay, but we can adjust it. And that's what the soldering table is for. Now, if you right click it, it will tell you that you need an adjustable um, storage unit in your hotbar and hold it while using the soldering station. So let's pull that out. 
we're going to right click on the soldering station and voila we have all these different options here now in order to uh, make this thing adjustable you're going to need two things you're going to need these uh, storage um, segment storage cells and uh, conversion matrices and uh, storage cells will increase the capacity so it will increase the uh, kilobytes per card and the conversion matrix will increase the amount of types that the card can hold so if we go ahead and right click right, right click this again we can see that we're 4096 if you want to increase the capacity it's going to use up these storage segments down here and you can see that every time I use one it's going down by one and you can increase these um, basically to whatever you want. Okay, The types, if I go ahead and increase these, it's going to slowly consume the conversion matrices. And uh, this is an adjustable ME storage. So pretty cool little item here. Next, real quick, I'll go over the encryptable cell. And uh, this is made by crafting regular ME1K storage alongside some iron, and it will give you an encryptable cell. Right now it says it's decrypted, but if I go ahead and hold it, and if I um, shift right click it will say the storage has been encrypted and it now belongs to Captain Jack okay so I'm the only one that's going to be able to use this little card here and it will keep all of your things safe so if somebody happens to come by steal your card and put it in their own ME system it's not gonna work okay um, if uh, you need to do that you have terrible friends alrighty then uh, next we have the storage uh, storage block container the ME block container and basically this uh, functions as kind of like a barrel or a deep storage unit, so to speak. And basically you can configure it um, to a certain type of lock right there on the top. You see that uh, it is not set to any type of block, but when I put a piece of dirt in there, it's going to say that the block is dirt and I will not be able to put anything else inside of here. Okay. So it's a good way to uh, segment off certain sections of um, your ME system. If you just want to store um, all your junk things in one place or on one drive, this is a fairly simple way to do it. So that's what the ME block container is. Next, we have this ME fluid crafting chamber. And uh, in order to make use of this, you're going to have to go ahead and make this ME fluid terminal. Um, this is what is going to allow you to see what kind of fluids are inside of your system. Um, -boo -boo. Yes, we will go over this really quickly. Um, and this will kind of segue us into the next part. What this is, is it basically acts like uh, almost like a little Mac for fluids and this will use the fluids that are inside of your system using the fluid storage cells and will combine it with regular items um, such as empty cells to create water cells something that people have been asking for for a long time so this is something really helpful you can click on this block and you have a you have a three by three grid um, with the space for nine um, encoded patterns and this one here i have encoded um, to make a water cell with one empty cell and one water bucket let me turn off this rain here so if we go inside of our system and I select craft because this is part of my system, it needs to be adjacent to your ME system in order to work, it's going to be able to craft one water cell. And that's because I have some fluid inside of here. And uh, this fluid terminal basically will tell you how many of uh, each fluid that you have inside of your system. Um, I will get into that in just one second. In order to uh, make patterns for this, just get your regular ME pattern encoder, put some blank patterns up here. Um, set the, the uh, pattern to whatever you want. So I have a bucket of lava and an empty cell. I've encoded it to make one lava cell. I'm going to go ahead and throw that inside my ME fluid crafting chamber. It's going to show up inside my ME system. I'm going to be able to make uh, some lava cells now because I have the empty cells and I also have some lava inside of my system. And I have this lava inside of here. Might as well talk about it when I'm here. I have the lava in here. Um, I can only hold that because I have some fluid storage in an ME drive that's uh, sort of hidden under there. So that's what the fluid crafting chamber does. All right, now let's look into this uh, ME fluid terminal a little bit closer. Um, what I have here is the ME fluid terminal. It's attached to my network, of course, and I have an ME 64K fluid storage in here. Now notice that you can only store up to five different fluids for each of these, but you can hold a lot. So uh, you may, you really shouldn't have that many fluids, um, but um, for the for the liquids that you don't have very much of the smaller drives or the smaller uh, cells should be fine okay so that's how i'm storing my fluid i need one of these fluid terminals to see it because the fluid terminal is separate as you saw earlier from the actual me item um, storage so you'll have to make this and what this will tell you is how much of each fluid that you have inside of your system now you see i have um, jelly craotium i have 800 millibuckets i have uh, one bucket of uh, molten silver uh, five buckets of resident ender and I have a kilo bucket of water. And if you hold shift while you mouse over that, you'll be able to see um, that uh, 
it kind of just breaks it down a little bit more. And it'll break it down right there in the middle there. It says amount. It'll jump between kilo and actual buckets, okay? So uh, that's how you can see what types of fluids are in here. Now you can do a couple things because there's uh, two slots here and here. If you want to um, fill up a certain cell, so if, you want, if I want a bucket of water, you just put it in here. It'll fill it up and move it to the right slot. If I want a cell, it'll fill up and move it to the right slot. And uh, that's just because I have the water highlighted. Now if I highlight resident ender and put a cell in here, it's not going to fill it because uh, for whatever reason I can't have this item in a cell, but I can have it in a bucket, so I could put a bucket here and it will take uh, one bucket out and I can use this for whatever I want and I can put it back in and vice versa. And you can do this with a whole bunch of other liquids, whatever you have in here. Certain liquids can only uh, be stored in certain ways and that's not quite one bucket so that didn't work. Okay, so that's the uh, that's how you store all your fluids. That's how you can see how much of each that you have inside. This is a really cool little interface here. Um, next, we have the ME fluid interface. And uh, this can basically this basically works the same way as the ME interface um, in that it will uh, send fluids this way and that. It will accept fluids. It'll put fluids into your system. It'll do all sorts of different things. So what I have here is um, I have all these different facings, and it represents each of the six facings of a cube. And right now I have uh, resident ender set to go south, and you can just simply change the direction that it's going by placing the type of fluid inside, and it will slowly fill up. If I remove this, what's going to happen is, and I remove it by clicking it, if I remove it, it's going to drain back into the system. And this is just kind of like a buffer tank right here. So if I unleash the buffer tank, because I have this one going out, and you can see by my mini-map up there, I have that one going out to the south. I have that hooked up to redstone. It's going to come out the south, and it's going to fill up this thing here. It's going to drain the buffer, and then it's going to start taking um, fluid from inside of here and draining it and send it, sending it to my tank over there. Okay, so that's pretty cool. That's one thing the interface can do. If I was to set it, I, I could go back, and it could suck it back in if I had another... Uh, Another lever over there, but I won't do it. Okay, it can also uh, take fluids in. So I have this little tank over here, and if I load this one up in here, it's gonna send this uh, gel of cryothium straight into my system, and you won't see it in here because it's just accepting into the system. And now I have uh, 11, almost 12 buckets of gel of cryothium. Okay, so there we're all set. And so that's how the ME interface works. And you can set your interfaces to send and receive fluids um, to all different places. Again, all you need to do is just grab a bucket, click here, and it will start draining it from your system, put it in a little bit of a buffer tank inside of here, and it will be ready for you to send it wherever you want. All right, one of the other things I have here is the fluid void. And uh, this is basically pretty self-explanatory. Any fluid that you shove into it will just disappear. Now, Captain, how do you move fluids around? Well, that's what the ME fluid export bus is. And these export and import and level emitters work, uh, that's a graphics glitch, work exactly the same way as the applied energistics ones, um, except for uh, a little bit inner, different interface here. Um, you just put the type of liquid that you want to export on this export bus. You can set how much uh, per tick exits it, and you can see that uh, 60 AE per tick, uh, it's uh, quite an extreme cost for this, especially if you have fluids moving uh, very quickly, or uh, a lot of fluids moving. Uh, just watch your power consumption there. All right, so what I'm going to do is look inside the system. I still have 1,800 millibuckets of gel cryothium, and you just watched me dump a bunch into this tank here, and that is because I have the level emitter set, and you can see that it's on uh, between that pipe there. I have the level emitter set to emit a signal anytime it's over 2,000, and uh, it's going to get me right around 1,800 because it doesn't quite uh, know There we go. Oh, did you see it just emptied the whole thing out? That's why I had it set to uh, a smaller amount, and that's why it ended up at 1800 okay? So that's what the uh, the export bus, the fluid export bus does. Um, pretty cool. You can use it to export into tanks and export into uh, whatever other fluid storage devices that you may have, okay? So this is coming in and immediately being removed by this export bus right here. Next thing we have is the ME fluid transition plane, and this works exactly the same way as a regular transition plane that you're used to um, using items. All you have to do is take a bucket, drop it right on top of there, and it's going to suck it right in with that transition plane. Doesn't quite work with flow blocks, so be careful. Ooh, this stuff is cold, making snowman. Okay, so if you just put a, a bucket of something right above it, it'll go into your system. We'll use some uh, resin ender here. 
You see we have nothing in the system because we shoved it all out here. Uh, ba -ba -ba, that's turned off. Let's turn that off. Let's put some ender in here. Drop in a bunch of buckets. And there we go. Gets sucked right into the system. And it's pushing a little bit more out of there still. But no big deal. So that's uh, what the transition plane does. Um, you might have a little bit of trouble making this work with some of the vanilla water and uh, lava blocks. But uh, hopefully that will be fixed. I'm sure you can attach these to like red power frames and stuff and move around to be able to suck oceans dry and whatever whatever other creative things that you can think of doing uh, with this uh, transition plane. So uh, that's the interface, that's the void, the fluid void, level emitter, export bus, transition plane, let's move on. All right, now there's only a few more things that we have not talked about yet. One of them being the ME Certus tank, which can hold 30 buckets, which is better than the standard tank. So that's what that does. Looks pretty, stacks, nice connected texture, great. Moving on. Next, we have the ME Fluid Storage Monitor, and that will tell you exactly how much of each is stored inside the system there. You just uh, right-click the monitor with the fluid that you want, and it will tell you how much you have in your system. Okay, so this corresponds to all these fluids up here. Next, we have the ME Fluid Import Bus and the Storage Bus. Let's talk about the Import Bus really quickly. If I go over here, I have an Import Bus attached to a, uh, a Rowcraft tank, and it's got some oil in there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Always Active, and what should start happening is the oil, and it is, is starting to drain out of my Railcraft tank, and it should be showing up in my system, okay? So it's going right out to my cards, very good. Okay, I've got three buckets in there so far. Now, the export bus, set to over here, will move it, Ooh, let me turn that off, we will move it right into this tank over here. So another um, way that this export bus works, very easy. Um, these can be attached to just about any type of fluid storage. Again, same thing with this uh, ME fluid storage bus. If I was to actually remove this and put the ME fluid storage bus on that tank, um, it would show that I have a ton, okay? So it just immediately added the entire load of uh, oil right into there. Okay, and now I'm just adding it to my cart instead. So we're back down to two buckets and it's actually uh, getting shoved into there, okay? So that's basically what the ME fluid storage bus does. Now, uh, what can you do with this that's, that's pretty neat? Um, I have an, an interface up here um, that's set to send acid one way and poison the other way. Uh, and if I go ahead and flip this switch, we can see that it's going to fill out these two tanks. So it's going to send uh, two different fluids through the same uh, fluid interface. And one's going to fill out this over here, which can be uh, connected to fluid ducts and other water transportation things. And it's going to fill up my two tanks here. Um, all these things here are hooked up using the ME storage buses, and they're all configured to their to their respective liquids. So if I look down in here, oh, it's kind of hard to see. Hold on. Well, you can see that it's it's a storage bus, okay? And I have this configured to put water inside of this one. And if I go ahead and select water, and I pull a bunch of water out, you can see that the levels are going to drop, okay? And I can take those cells out. I can put them back in if I want to. If I wanted to grab some lava out, works the same way. Grab some lava, and there's a bunch of lava in there. A little bit in my, little bit was on my card. A little bit was in the tanks and using the storage bus, so I can drain some lava out of there. And this will take various other forms of uh, water um, storage devices, like a drum, for instance. Exist. For example, if I put a drum here, it'll. Uh, or which will take destabilized redstone. I think just a bucket. Yeah. So I can take some destabilized redstone out using a bucket. I uh, don't think I can use a can. Nope, I can use a can on like force, take a little bit of force out of the system. Uh, I can use a can on biomass, and basically you get the point. Okay? And uh, as you put fluids into your system, by just putting them in the left slot over here, you can just fill stuff right back up. Pretty cool. You can monitor your levels. You can make all sorts of crazy fluid management systems uh, with uh, whatever creative, ingenious thinking that you can think of. And that is basically all to the extra cells mod. Very versatile. Adds a lot to AE. Um, really helpful if you're using like a Cori Plus that's sucking up a whole bunch of liquids. You can store them right inside your AE network and be done with it. Just beware that this will cause a strain on power on your system. That's pretty much it for this mod. Make sure you check us out on uh, Facebook. Our website's minecrafters.com. And as always, guys, keep watching and stay poised.